Hey mask nerds, welcome back to another mask review video. I took a couple weeks off just to take a break from masks. I look away for one second and it all explodes and it's all craziness. So I've been busy trying to answer questions and do all that, but I'm back for another video. Uh, we, today's video got some topics we're gonna to cover today, like why supplier, why am I, why am I also interested in supplier qualification, not just mass testing? So maybe people aren't quite aware of that in the background, but I'm really trying to qualify suppliers as well as test masks. Uh, talk about double masking. Heard Fauci tweet that. A lot of other people have been talking about double masking. What the heck are they talking about? What does that mean? And is it a great solution? Uh, are more layers better than fewer layers? This is a conversation I've heard quite a bit. Uh, is a five layer mask better than a four layer, which is better than a three? Let's talk about that. OSHA fit factor. N95s need to be fitted. If you're not fitted, they don't work. And you need a fit factor of 100. We're gonna talk about what the heck that means and why I don't think it's practical for general population. And last but not least, N95 availability. I've been working to contact suppliers and mask manufacturers and anyone who will ask, well, let me talk to them. Are there enough N95s out there? Or what should we be doing with them? So we'll cover that. All right, so let's dig in. If you're new to my video, I'm Aaron. I've been testing masks in my bathroom to try to figure out which ones are the best, which had good filtration efficiency using real scientific grade instrumentation. I myself have a background in that and I'm trying to leverage that to help people learn more about masks. So part of that work is not just testing the masks, but also trying to find suppliers so that people know who to purchase from. Now, first and foremost, everything I do is funded by myself. I never take payments from any mask manufacturer. All the links that I have, they're not affiliate links. I don't care about that. I'm not trying to make money on this. I don't want to make money on this. I want to be an independent reviewer of you know mask information so that is what i'm trying to do so i also want to apply suppliers so that we can direct people to know like hey like 90 percent of the masks i've tested the other 10 are probably good because they're all buying them from south korea and the data looks good so that's part of that so the, why don't i like amazon ebay and etsy well amazon has the problem that the supplier could be any of a number when you go to amazon you have to look like who's it sold and fulfilled by right like it might be fulfilled by amazon but it actually comes from someone else like it's a big problem and i won't be able to qualify all the suppliers and when fakes hit it's going to be etsy ebay and amazon where they come in. You don't think N95s are gonna be faked? Watch out, they were in the past and they will again. The problem is, is that we don't have a good method of controlling masks right now. So, right, if you're, so I'll review a few masks that you can purchase on Amazon and I'll talk about how to get them. But in general, I would just not buy from any random supplier on Amazon. Uh, if you get them straight from Amazon, okay, maybe there's less risk. You know, it's just, what's your risk level? If you wanna save a few bucks and roll the dice, go for it, I'm not gonna stop you. Uh, I just wanna identify suppliers that carry good mask and a wide variety of masks. Um, and so that's why I don't recommend Amazon, eBay, or Etsy for all of your mask needs. Great for other things that aren't health critical, but I, I, right now I just, I worry that the fakes are there. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm overblowing that issue. It's hard for me to say. I stopped looking for fakes. I found fakes early in the summer that were on Amazon and I stopped looking for them. Okay, double masking. You may have heard Fauci talking about that. Well, the more masks, the better, right? Well, I mean, the reality is what they're after is, you guys are all familiar with these, they're surgical masks. Technically they're called procedural masks because they have ear loops, so if you're a mask nerd, you'll note that. But for layman's term, we're gonna call them surgical masks. Now, these masks have the magic inside of them. They have that melt blown layer inside of there, and that's what we're after. Filtration efficiency comes from our technology, and that technology is melt blown. It's inside of here. So what Fauci and others are advocating is like, look, these are kind of becoming readily available. They're fairly inexpensive, you know, maybe 25 to you know 50 cents. This is an ASTME, ASTM, level three uh, mask from Lutima. They're a US based company, really nice mask. Uh, so what they're saying is, hey, look, these masks have good material, but the fits, and I've shown the data over and over again. I think I, I tested this mask uh, myself. This particular mask I got as it is worn right here, 76% filtration efficiency. So not bad, way better than a cloth mask at 50, but still way short of the 95 plus that I've been capable of getting with a variety of other KF94 masks. So what can we do to improve this? Well, if there was only some way to hold it to our face. So what they're saying is, hey, look, you can take a nice well-fitting cloth mask, like this one has the metal nose bridge in and all that good stuff, and you can wear it over the surgical mask, improving that fit. Now I'll do some tests next week to see how much it really gives me, but there's a trade-off to that. So wait, I mean, is this better than a cloth mask alone? Yes, because you have the magic material, that melt blown in there that's gonna capture the particles for inhalation protection, but it comes with a penalty and that penalty is pressure drop. So this mask alone has some pressure drop. Um, and when you combine that with a cloth mask, the cloth mask provides you really very limited protection. So it's really not adding much to the system overall. So you're getting, let's say 30% through this, and then you get like 90, 85, 90% through this. Okay, wow, we have an improvement, but it comes at the cost of pressure drop. These are hard to breathe in. I can tell right away. I'll have some data next week to highlight 
highlight what are these and what combinations you can have. And the key thing is not all cloth masks would do this. Remember, our goal is to seal that mask against our face. There are better solutions like mask fitters, but in terms of the double mask, you know, if I take this cloth mask and I couple it with this cloth mask, or a, a surgical mask and couple it with this cloth mask, I still have a big problem. It's leaking right here. This mask doesn't smell, seal well to my nose. And so when I'm breathing, it's still leaking out there. So is it better than just a cloth mask? Yes. But my argument is one mask that's well fitting is the way we should go. Now, I am also seeing some people doing things I don't recommend, like wearing a surgical mask and then putting like an N95 over that. So then they have a surgical, not a great solution. One, you're going to create leaks at the seams of the mask. So if so do not double mask if you already have a good respirator. If you have a respirator like this, KF94, K95, FFP2, blah, 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 you don't need to put the mask under, right? Good mask, it, one well-fitting mask is my ideal solution. I don't like double masking. I don't think we should do it if we don't have to. One mask, so if you have a respirator, you don't need to put a mask under it. Now, do you want to put a mask over it to help protect the respirator from splash and, and try to limit it, expo you know, maximize its life? Ah, sure, I guess. I don't think there's really much value to that. I've shown my data in a clean office environment 40 hours there's no observable difference between filtration efficiency or even pressure drop. So you can if you want. But if you have one good mask, do not put a surgical under because then you're going to create leaks and it's going to be more uncomfortable and it's even more pressure drop. One mask that's going to fit well is what we should be striving for. The one mask to rule them all. Maybe we'll find it. Okay. Uh, another question I get a lot is, are more, are more layers better? Okay. So masks in general are made by, you know, basically ultrasonically welding a bunch of layers together to create these masks. And you're going to see some advertisements for five layer masks, four layer masks, three layer masks is more better. The answer is no. What we want to do is we want three things, high filtration, low pressure drop, and in my opinion, no mask collapse. So it's not sucking to your face. How a manufacturer achieves that is whatever they want to do. If they can do it with a hundred layers, great. If you can do it with one layer, great as well. That's what we should be looking for, masks that features those things. So more, la more layers is not better. My argument is usually more layers is worse, and I'll explain why. So this is our classic Boughton white. I cut it open because it's used. It has uh, four layers. First, we have this outer layer. It's soft. It's the kind of, uh, it's like a spun bond um, polypropylene. It's soft. It gives them a nice thing. The next layer is this really stiff layer that's giving it its form. I don't know what material it is, uh, but it's like super stiff. They call it, I think, DuPont hard cell or something like that. Uh, and you're seeing this a lot in all the masks that don't collapse. So this is like the structural layer. Again, it's transparent. You can probably see through it and see me through it. The next layer is the magic layer. It's that melt blown layer that we all care about. This is where the electrostatic charge and all that lives. And this is capturing the particles. We want this. Now, whether you have two of these or one of these, I don't think it matters as long as you're hitting the numbers that you need to hit. And then the last layer is just this layer that's against your face. Uh, again, I'm not sure what exactly. I'm sure it's poly, uh, propylene or maybe polyethylene. I can never remember. <laughs> There'll be a star at the bottom, I'm sure. Uh, and then, you know, it's this soft fabric that's going, or soft material that's going into your face. It's really silky and smooth. Now, that's one example. And then I have here, this is the, I'm not picking on them. This is the well before K, uh, their KN95 style. This is a five layer mask. Is it better? Well, you know, my argument is not necessarily. So in this mask here, and I'm going to try to work the magic with the camera, we have uh, on the inside layer here, uh, one layer of this spun bond, and then there's a second layer of spun bond, which I'm not sure exactly why there's two inside layers. There might be like some penetration, liquid penetration test that they were struggling with. And then they have two layers of melt blown. So this is a dye, a black mask. So that's one layer of melt blown, two layers of melt blown, and then the outer layer here. So that's not, you know, it's not perfectly seen. I might maybe do another video on that. But anyways, th those are the five layers. Now they have two melt blown layers. Is that good or bad? Uh, in my opinion, I'm not sure. It, the ideal optimization for a mask is to have the melt blown layer uh, provide the protection that you need to pass the standards with the lowest pressure drop as possible. When you combine two well performing things, so let's say this is like 98, 99% normally, and they put two of them together, so now you have 99.99, what? Is that better? Not really, because like that improvement that you got in terms of filtration efficiency is really small, but the pressure drop is way worse, right? Now we've doubled the pressure drop. And so, in my opinion, I think we want good filtering masks that have low pressure drop. And so in this particular mask, it showed to have high pressure drop and it might be because they put two layers of melt blown in there. Now they were striving maybe for maximum protection and weren't thinking necessarily about breathability as a key metric, but um, 
that's the result of that. So is more layers better? No. Uh, the, the Mass Labs mask, which is right here, this is a three layer mask. Again, we really good results on these masks. They're only three layers. Uh, they have, a, the, they did, a, you know, they're combining layers to get fewer of them together. And if you can do that, you're gonna even get better pressure drops. So no, we should be looking at three things when you're purchasing a mask. Does it meet some filtration specifications that I care about? Do they publish any pressure drop data? And do they have some sort of conformable standard and test data that they're presenting to people? Okay. Uh, nose wire conformability. So the, today's video, and if you are a super nerd and you're going to hang around to the end, uh, you're going to hear a lot of discussion about nose wire problems that I discovered in all these masks. So I wanted to put together an example to highlight what I'm talking about when I'm talking about nose wire conformability. So back comes Mr. Lighter. Uh, remember in the previous video, I was using that to uh, do the candle blowout. I actually spent a hard time trying to find a, a feature to, to show this. Uh, I tried broomsticks and everything else. And again, Mr. Lighter comes back. It actually has a very interesting shape. It's very similar to my nose. And I was kind of shocked when I did this test uh, to illustrate, I was usually originally using a corner of a desk, but I think this is a better example. Okay, so nose wire conformability is something like sculptability. So there's two things when we talk about nose wires. One, we want, a, I like a stiff nose wire. It's going to act like a spring and really hold it against your nose in there. But the other thing is sculptability. How do I get it to conform to the topography or the shape of my face without having to like take the mask off and bend it and then put it back on, right? So sculptability is really important. And I found in the test today that really a, a lot of the fit issues that I was dealing with these masks had to do with nose wires. So I have a nice example here I'm going to show. All right, so what we're going to do is I got five different or six different nose wires here. I have my personal favorite, the LG Air washer. Really stiff, really sculptable. Botten, pretty dang good. Powcom, still good, but a little marginal. Uh, I have the uh, Well Before, which we'll have a mask review later in this video. I have the Filter 95. Now, if you remember back to a previous video, I tested the Costco Filter 95. Great media. Nose wire couldn't seal. I didn't get good results. Well, we'll show, I can show why. And the Travisity, which is also featured in this video, also gave really bad results from a nose wire perspective, although the mask was really well built, and it's a U.S. company, um, and hopefully they'll correct that. So let's dig in. So let's try the first one. So I'm going to do my best to get this in camera. And you might be looking here because I'm looking at the little monitor that I have to the side of your screen. This. So I'm going to do the I'm going to do the air washer. So I bend it over. I'm going to par parallel. And when I let go, how much spring back? Oh, we get a little bit of spring back, right? It's not perfect. It still has some a small amount of spring back that happens. Let's do the bottom next. It's the relative value that really matters. Okay, so those are pretty dang similar. We'll do the uh, Powcom. Push it to the edge. Hey, you know, you maybe you can see it. There's a little, and my hands are kind of in the way, but you can kind of see that that green's hanging out. It'll get more exaggerated as we go along. Here's the well before. I'm going to push it to that edge. Boom, look at that. Can you see that sticking out the side? So even though the well before is getting, and I'll try my best to do this a little bit better, I'm pushing this in. Boing, sticks back out. All right, let's go further down the list. Filter 95, it's even worse. Yeah, like I'm pushing it to the nose. Boing, look, it's even worse. And then the Trivicity, it had too much plastic, so way too much spring back. I mean, you look at that, it just goes boing, and it doesn't seal. So what we're talking about is sculptability, and we can see right away that the masks that seal well to my face, which show good results for me, show really sculptable things. Now, if we look to what do you know, mass manufacturers that are industrial masks that are kind of like the gold standard, people always say N95s are the gold standard, but I think 3M is actually the gold standard, not all N95s are. What do they use? They use in the 8210, a thick, heavy gauge wire, uh, aluminum piece, super strong, and also super sculptable. I can't, I don't want to tear this apart because I only have a few of these. Um, and I just, and we'll talk more about this in the N95 availability. Here's this trifold Aurora series. He, you know what they use for a nose wire? A huge chunk of aluminum again. Super sculptable, super formable. Like that's what we want in mass. So I think that a lot of people haven't thought about it. Not everyone reviews videos like I do and not everyone tries a million different masks. So I'm telling you, sculptability is really important and I've been working with mass manufacturers to tell them. So um, I'll talk about that in the forward review, what I talked to well before. They're looking at, uh, they're updating to a new mass uh, and I'll talk more about that. So they have a new mass. Uh, they're gonna come out with better nose wire, all the things we talked about uh, because their really goal is to really actually provide great PPE. Uh, also talk to Albert at uh, Mass Labs. Same thing with them. They're actually looking at improving their nose wire too because they kind of see the same thing with of people that have large nose bridges that can't seal it. Sculptability becomes a dominant thing. So uh, that's a good example about it. We'll hear a lot more in the rest of the reviews of my complaints in that space from other masks that did not perform as well. OSHA fit factor. I hear it all the time. I see people say, oh, we can't, and 95s can't be used for everyone because they can't fit test them. And I say bananas to that <laughs> because look, the reality is that there is an OSHA standard for fit. It's 1% leakage or a fit factor of 100. So we'll talk about how that measurement is and why I think that is an overkill test. 
that's requirement. So OSHA and NIOSH, uh, I, may, I think it's primarily OSHA, so I might have a little technical error there. I'll correct at the bottom, or if I have it wrong, let me know in the comments. But uh, OSHA has a requirement that if you're fitted with an N95, it needs to have a fit factor of 100 better for a quantitative fit. A quantitative fit is like a measurement-based system, a port account-based system. It's really the to me the best way to do it. It's like super accurate and it's very similar to what I'm doing. The only difference with the port account versus what I am doing is that the port account uh, basically selects singly charged 40 to 60 nanometer particles. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it really means is that they pick a particle that like 99.5 or greater go get caught by the media all the time. Even though it's 95 in 95 media, like super high capture rate. What that means is that when they measure particles inside the mask, so what the port account does is it measures particles in here. Well, let's go this way. Measure particles in here versus the stuff on the outside. And that's how they calculate the fit factor. And the only way the particles can get in there, because remember this thing is now selecting that particle type, uh, basically guarantees that all of the particles get caught in the mask, means that they had the leak to get in there. So what they measure is the leak rate. And so the fit factor, is a measurement of a leakage rate. And so I put a table up here. This is how I convert, basically like assume that again, 99%, you know, perfect media. So if you get a fit factor of 100, it means you have 1% linkage. Now, a fit factor of 50 may seem like, oh, that's really much worse. But in reality, it's not. A fit factor of 50 is actually only 2% or 98% thing. So it seems like this huge range. It's just like sunscreen. Sunscreen, I think SPF 30 is 3% blockage and SPF 50 must be like twice as good. Uh, no, it actually is two, you know, it only allows 2% through. So it, it can be deceiving about that range of values. Now, what is the number we need to hit? Well, that's a million dollar question. From my perspective, I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not a virologist, I'm not an industrial hygienist. From my perspective, look, if we're hitting 90s, I think we've made a huge improvement from cloth mass in the 40s if we're getting to the 90s. What's a fit factor of 90? A fit factor of 10. So, well, it's 10, but if, uh, we need a fit factor of 100. Yeah, but like the argument is if you're in, if you're in an OSHA, if you're a workplace, and this is the thing that's keeping you from getting COVID, you absolutely need to be fit tested and you should be wearing the best dang mask you can get. Does everyone need that in the general population? No, I think it's overly restrictive. Even if you poorly wore this mask and it was barely fitting, you know, even a fit factor of like one point, uh, what did I say? Uh, a fit factor of 1.66, 1 1.66 will give you a 40% protection. That's like cloth mass. So like, even if you're like, I mean, 1.44 is like most of the air is passing. What I have found in my experience is that if you uh, can get a good seal without jets of air, and we talked about in another video of fit, like if you can get that, you're getting into the, the fit factor of 10. You're getting like 90% protection. If you want to get to 99% protection, yeah, you're going to need a quantitative fit method to do that. Or you're going to have to switch a mess to go to a last elastomeric respirators and all these other things. Do we need that for the general population? No. If people want that, go for it. Go for that high thing. I'm not going to stop you, but I think we shouldn't prevent people from adopting these masks because we have a fear that we might only hit 90%. Okay, last topic, N95 availability. Now, everyone's been talking about we need to save N95 for wall guards, including me. I think that's absolutely was true. I'm not sure that is true now. So I've been reached out to um, Mass manufacturers, uh, filter manu media manufacturers, uh, suppliers for PPE for hospitals and asking them, hey, like, where's your status? So mass manufacturers have pretty much said, hey, I can get as much media as I need. I have access to it. There's lots of it out there. Prices have come down dramatically. They might come back up a little bit as more people need them, uh, but in general, they are very low. But... Uh, the, you know, the question is, well, what about healthcare workers? I'm still hearing about shortages of them. And I think the answer is there are still shortages and it's specifically 3M masks. Now, maybe people have more information on that, but it seems like th specific models of 3M are still in short supply. But here's the thing, 3M, as I understand it, and they can correct me if I'm wrong. So 3M, if you want to comment in the, throw a, a comment in the comment section, I'd love to hear it. As I understand it, they have allocated all of those to healthcare providers that supply PPE to hospitals, meaning they get first dibs on any of that stuff. So that shortage is an issue that they got to solve on there and get their production up. There's plenty of other PPE available, so they just need to be either fitted on different masks or, you know, that's kind of a complex thing. But no, if you're buying an N95 at the store, I, you're not taking it from healthcare any workers, at least as I understand. So I'm officially lifting the ban on N95s, or at least what I've no one really cares. My it's pretty small influence, but in general, I've avoided N95s. I'm saying, hey, look, if you can find N95s, go for it. But make sure you're buying from reliable sources. Don't Amazon, eBay, Etsy. Again, if there's going to be fakes, they're going to be there. Uh, if you can go to Granger, you can go to McMaster or Zorro or any of those big industrial supplies, and you're seeing N95s, buy them if you want. 
Lowe's, Home, De Home Depot, wherever, you can buy an N95. There are N95s available here in the US and I'll be testing some of them. Things like, uh, well, that, these aren't made in the US, but these are the 3M9502. Uh, this is a Chinese KN style, NIOSH approved N95. I'll be testing some of these. They're great options. You can get Aurora's uh, now. And also there's US made manufacturers that are not 3M that are making masks. This is a mask by 3PE and some others. So if you can find them, um, I there's also, I think, a uh, United States mask, mask of the United States or something like that. I, I've been contacted. Hey, if you're watching the video, I'd love to test your mask out. They're a US-based manufacturer. They had an article saying, hey, look, we have tons of masks to sale and we're turning our production line down because we no one's buying them because we keep telling people not to buy N95. So here's my thing. Stay away from the surgical grade 3M N95. Save those for healthcare workers. Anything else, fair game, go for it. Get them. If you like them, now remember, N95s are always going to be headband. Why? Because of that OSHA requirement of 1% leakage. That's what drives that. So uh, you're going to get stuck with headbands if you go NIOSH approved N95. If you don't like headbands, I'm not a fan of them. I think uh, I like ear loops. Uh, I'm not striving for 99% filtration efficiency all the time. Uh, you know, th just be aware of that. All right, so we'll dig into the mask reviews here. All right, my top mask picks for right now. There's been a little bit of change, but in general have remained fairly constant. So we have a couple new additions. One, I'm gonna recommend for the smaller faces, the Dr. Peary Medium. I'm adding that to my list of two other masks that I recommend for smaller faces, the Bluna Face Fit and the Blue Bond 3D. So I'm gonna add the Dr. Peary in that stack. Now this is definitely a smaller mass um, than the Bluna, but not actually in width or height. It's really the, about the projection of the, of the upper and lower flap. So if we compare them kind of side by side, you know, they're not really that different in terms of the dimensions here. But what you do notice is like, for example, on the lower flap, the comparison of length of these lower flaps is there is quite a bit of difference in terms of that. So uh, if you're looking for even a smaller mask, the Dr. Peary Medium. Now it's not my favorite mask at all times because it does have mask collapse, but I know that people are looking for smaller masks. Um, and I'll also be testing the Dr. or sorry, the Botten Medium and some other mediums as well. So hopefully we'll see that. But right now, you know, if I had to pick one mask that fits probably the widest variety of faces and where I'd start, I think it's the Bluna Face Fit. Now this is a silver port is the test port that I puncture, so masks that you buy won't have this. Um, but the Bluna Face Fit I'm, I like a lot. It's black, the adjustable ear loops, and it does seem to fit a wide variety of faces. What I've learned from all this, having now gotten some smaller masks to test, is I think it's better to err on the side of small than large. So I would start with a smaller, smaller mass and, and work your way up. What you'll find in a small mass that's uncomfortable is that they're really tight to your face and they're really close to your mouth. Um, and then as you go to bigger mouth, a uh, bigger mass that starts to step away. But if you go too big, of course, then the challenge becomes that you don't necessarily get a good fit. If you do want to go to some larger mass, which are fine, I think uh, my recommendations are the, uh, the Botten Black uh, I started with this mask this summer. I still wear it all the time. It's a great mask, adjustable ear loops, uh, and also the LG Air Washer, uh, the black style they call it. This is a really great mask, amazing nose wire on this. I really like this. So if you have like a really tall nose bridge or a really sensitive nose fit, this is gonna be an option. Now the Bluna, the, the, the Botten Black is probably still one of the bigger masks out there. Uh, the Korea mask also available from Be Healthy is pretty large as well. Um, but just to give you an example about, you know, kind of how big are these masks difference. I'm gonna take the smaller mask that I have here today, the, the Dr. Peary. I'm gonna put it in on, and I'll show you that it, the, the Botten's actually big enough to fit, you know, pretty much over this mask to give you a frame of reference about, you know, how, what different size look. Now this mask still fit my face. Uh, the Dr. Peary, I, st I got, uh, 98.72 filtration efficiency. So still, even though the mask is a little small for my face, and it, you can see that it's kind of barely tucking under my chin there. Um, when we look at the bot and large, here we go. I'll put it over this mask. So it gives you an idea about, you know, different sizes and how much bigger this mask is. So clearly uh, it's, you know, you can fit a bigger mask if you want to, but you can also fit a smaller mask on a larger face. They're just not as comfortable. So what does that mean? Well, when I notice when I wear a small mask, look, no, notice that it's sitting down on my nose. And when I open my chin's popping out. So that will be the sign that a mask is too small is that talking in motion is it's, it's just tight across this distance. And a mask is too big, you'll find that it, the flap's hanging down here and you can't get a seal. So that's kind of how you start. Now, I don't, unfortunately, mask sizing, I still am not an expert in it and I don't have a lot of sample size. So we'll start there. So take a look at the links in the description below. Uh, and my recommendation again is, yeah, start with a, a sort of medium to smaller ma medium mask if you think you have a larger face and work your way up to the bottoms. Uh, always order in small quantities try them out make sure you get a good face seal I have previous videos um, where I talk about how to get a face seal I'll put a link in that description as well uh, and then just kind of have a general way to get a face seal in these style of masks
in the KN space. Oh, oh, sorry, actually, before I get too far, I do also have one other recommendation. Now this mask fits a variety of faces too. I kind of consider it kind of like in the Bluna face fit category. Um, and that's the mask labs. Uh, I think that if you are a fashion forward mask, you're looking for a protective mask that's fashion forward, these uh, FFP2 rated uh, from Mask Lab are really cool. This is technically FFP1 rated or FFP1 rated because they had not received the FFP2 certification, but these masks are actually the same. They call them the version 2.0. Um, I'm not sure all which in the FFP1 actually had the FFP2 media in it. So to be safe, just buy the FFP2 mask, but I really like these. Again, the test port's added by me for the test, but otherwise would not feature that. Why do I like these masks? Well, they're really lightweight. They're easy to breathe. What do I not like about them? The only, only complaints I have is that the nose wire is not as good as, let's say, the Botan or other. I mean, it's good. It's just not as good. It has a little bit more spring back. It's not quite as long as the Botan. And so for me, I can kind of feel that nose wire touching my face here. And for long wears, it's just not there for me yet. It also does not have adjustable ear loops. It is an amazing mask otherwise and I think uh, hopefully those correct and, and mass lab I talked to them are, are making some changes to the nose wire I'm not sure what they're gonna do with the adjustable ear loops I think they might be talking about adding um, some little uh, cord locks on here to give you effectively adjustable ear loops I think that'd be an awesome addition um, so these are really cool mask lab has them uh, coming out of Hong Kong so that is my fashion pick uh, KN space a little bit of change there as well. Now, I don't test a ton of cans, so my recommendations are based on the ones that I've tested. There might be actually better ones out there, and I'm gonna be testing a whole bunch more here shortly, but right now, one that kind of comes up and takes over is the Powcom Black. So I tested this as part of this, uh, as part of this experiment here. Uh, Powcom Black, Black came in as worn for me, 96.81 in terms of filtration efficiency. If I pinch that nose bridge and really, nose bridge and really tried to focus on improving my filtration efficiency, I got it up to 98.86. So good media. Again, it highlights that face fit's going to dominate. This mask is a little bit smaller than other masks that I recommend, like the Arun. Um, and that's just, and that's kind of the issue. So if you, I like this mask, one is black. They're readily available. They're fairly inexpensive. I think they're under a dollar, like approaching a dollar a mask. So these are really great option. Um, and they also have the Arun. I like the Arun's, uh, these ones come with a uh, metal nose clip. These are really nice in terms of getting like a little bit larger face seal, a uh, great media in these, um, maybe a little bit of sacrifice of breathability. So that's why I'm excited to test some of the 3M and Honeywell versions. Uh, they have some basically some KN95s that I got my hands on. So I'll be testing those. So this might change, but right now, if you like KNs, you know, either of these two are really great options. Um, other masks that I'll test today, still highly protective. It's just that, you know, the combination of breathability and nose wire, just in my opinion, don't quite have go to the top of the pile. So there is our top mask picks for right now. The individual mask review time. So we're gonna go through individual masks that I came through this latest test data. So if you're a mega mask nerd and you want the real details, hang around. We'll start with the bluegrass mask. Now this is a US made style, cup style mask. Some nice features, they include a really soft foam on the top to get help with nose seal and a good thick aluminum external nose clip. So I'm really excited to see this. Uh, these are part of the masks that I started testing that come from Amazon. So these are available via Amazon. Now they are US made distributor. If you go to the Amazon page, it says ships by and sold by Bluegrass. You gotta look at that key, you know, those couple of key uh, things there to make sure you're getting them from them. These are legit um, headband style. Again, the port here is something I add for the testing. It does not come with the mask. You know, really, you know, in terms of protection, this mask came in at about 85.43 for my test air so on my face. Um, face feel, I feel like I really got a really good job. I didn't feel anything leaking. Uh, they have AST, ASTM F2100 test data on this. Uh, so definitely they're doing all the things right. I think the difference is, is that their AST, ASTM test data is, is good for a surgical mask. And this is typically what I see for our ASTM, like surgical level of testing. When I go and test them in my test aerosol, they kind of come test a little lower. And I think that's the difference between the, the pressure drop or the flow rate through that I, as I breathe in and the particle size. So still really a protective mask. It's always hard for me to gauge exactly where it is. Now, why would I even talk about this, test this mask? Well, one of the things that's really nice about it, it's cup style, but super breathable. It's actually one of the lowest pressure drop masks that I had that I tested this day. Um, and relative to some of the other pressure masks that I have with low pressure drop, uh, it, it's really up there in terms of its performance. So if you're looking for a cup style mask, US made, fairly inexpensive dollar. I think they're $17.99 on Amazon, so they include shipping, so $1.70 shipped. Um, or oh, $17.99 for 10 of them, $1.70 shipped, uh, and, and headband style. So if you're looking for a protective mask that's really reasonably priced, something that you're just, you know, you, you don't care about destroying, they're fairly inexpensive, this is a really great option made in the US. I did talk with the, with the owners of them, and they are actually gonna make a slightly more protective version of this. They're gonna change that media a little bit, go a little bit higher with that performance. Um, so I think that that would be a great option, but uh, I was kind of impressed with that. 
Other uh, cup style masks I test is from the Aliable Medical. This is the uh, S. M200. This is a cup style mask, uh, headband, again, soft foam on the nose, just like 3M does. The metal clip on this is maybe even, it's definitely heavier gauge than the bluegrass, and maybe even, it's not quite the same thickness as 3M, but it's definitely heavy gauge. Um, headband style, again, the test probe is added by me, so you're seeing the actual mask I tested. Uh, for, the, for this mask, I got 96.93, so pretty dang protective. Pressure drop came in at 0.53, quality factor of 6.6. .6. Remember my pressure drop measurement, not always great. Um, so, you know, protective, yes. Cup style, yes. Uh, pricing, I'm not exactly sure. I, haven't, I didn't double check before this video. Um, the only thing I kind of didn't like is that they use staples, which I don't know from a liability standpoint, I don't see a lot of stapled masks nowadays. I know they do allow it. NIOSH, NIOSH and OSHA allow stapled masks, so it's not like a major issue just from a reliability standpoint. Um, in terms of sizing, so I thought I'd just kind of compare these cup masks since we're talking about the cups. You know, we compare, it's, it's definitely a wider edge out here and the build quality is really nice on it too. It's very similar to 3M when I look at them, um, but the difference is that the width over here is a lot wider than the 3M and we compare that to like the bluegrass. The bluegrass is a little bit narrow. Now I did get decent fit on all of these, but these, you know, all masks are always face specific. So these are good options. So Aliable Medical seems to be making uh, some really excellent uh, protective products. Uh, so when we look at, so what's in Ronald Liable Medical, we'll talk about their, um, this is their MB100. This is a KF style mask. Now, MB Medical is a US based company. They're importing masks from Korea. Um, so they're, you're basically getting kind of like KF94. And I forgot to mention that the, uh, that this is, I think, a Korea first class, which is actually their um, their uh, industrial mass standard. So uh, this is a, a KF style. It, it is pro it's made in Korea. The test data came back that it's that it's pretty dang good. Um, so it's very very likely that these are just KF ninety four masks that they're importing. I mean, they definitely are. They said that I talked to the other. They're importing Korean masks and then just kind of rebranding them themselves. So no problem with that. They're protective. So this. Uh, this particular mask boat style comes with a nose clip, which I unfortunately dropped uh, in the first take of this video and fell onto the floor and disappeared. But it does come with a nose clip. So it has long ear loops that are kind of designed to be used with a mask clip. Of course, you can always tie them and shorten them if you just want to make them uh, an ear loop mask. Um, so the, you know, on this particular mask, it's quite big. So the only thing I can say is like, if you have a big face, this is definitely going to be for you. Smaller face is going to be too big. It has a lot of projection on the upper and lower uh, flaps it's a very tall mask so it is a big mask that's probably my only complaint about it is i could actually not get even with the with the nose with the ear clips applied to it back here um with the nose the the nose wire was not enough to hold it to my to get a tight seal so as it was worn i got 93.72 if i sealed this with just going to do a nose clip tile clip pinch i got 99.33 percent you know pressure drop i got about a half inch of water or so quality factor of 10 so it's actually pretty decent um, the issue that i have is that it's maybe even too big for my face so it's i'm getting a little bit of looseness down here and so what's that happening is it's kind of pulling the mask up and so i'm trying to hold it in place by pinching the nose and getting that nose wire so i think this mask is probably just too big for me so protective yes quality pretty decent you know in terms of pressure drop uh, but on the big side. So if you're looking for a big mask, this is going to be it. Um, also available on Amazon. They have a website as well, so just make sure it comes from Aliable Medical. They also offer uh, a, a bifold style. Why don't I ever talk about bifold? So this is maybe just a byproduct to talk about Aliable Medical. You know, these are a nice mask. These are the AER masks. They're actually stamped right on here. So that's another Korean mask manufacturer. So they're definitely just uh, rebranding re or bringing in uh, Korean mask. So these are the, a I think this is the AER Pro actually is what they're selling. Now, why don't I like these? Well, these actually are really nice mask in terms of media and breathability. Why don't I like bifolds? Bifolds, the Korean bifolds seem to have this like hook on the bottom. And what I found is that from people that I've kind of tested fit with these and myself is that that hook, if you want to get a good seal and you use like, let's say a mask clip, the hook digs in down here and it's very sensitive to your this distance in your face kf does not the kn95 cone style seem to be a little bit better so if you want to bifold i think the kn style mask is a better shape than these but uh i didn't test these but they are aer masks so those are kf94 rated so i'm sure they're good so it's kind of an interesting little company so good masks uh definitely are protective um so if you're looking for some more protective masks Next up is the Lutima brand. Now, this is a U.S.-made manufacturer that's making a, let's say, a KN-style bifold mask. They also are offering a couple of surgical masks and stuff like that. So I tested the Lutima uh, M95i. Uh, this is, I think, their large mask uh, in black. Um, the results came back uh, pretty good. You know, so I 
in terms of face fit, 97, or in terms of, in terms of as worn on my face, 97.16. So that's pretty good. It's up there with the Palcoms. Uh, the nose wire is not as good as them, but I still got a good fit on my face and it's a you know pretty conformable nose wire. If I pinched it and really just seal it, see what I, best I could get, I got 99.23. So in terms of protection and filter media, these are really nice. My complaint with them though, is that the pressure drop is pretty high, 0.88 uh, for frame of reference. Unfortunately, my pressure drop measurement sucks. Uh, I did start adding a um, control mask in my pressure drop. So like say the 3M 8210 came at 0.4 this time, whereas like the Air Queen Nano was 0.4. So it's about twice the pressure drop of those masks and the rest of the bottoms and all those KF94s are in there. So it's, it's, it's a little hard to breathe in. This is a five layer mask. So they really went for high filtration efficiency, but that came at the cost of pressure drop. And I think that that was maybe a little bit of a mistake. Maybe uh, a single, little bit thicker GSM melt blown might have gave them a little bit overall better protection. So a little bit high pressure drop, but definitely the filtration efficiency. So if you're looking for a protective mask, they definitely have it. Now they also offer them in kids mask and other sizes. So this is the kid and colors as well. So they have colored versions of these, you know, in terms of build quality, they're pretty good. You know, my only other complaint that I have is that they do a big chunk of electro and maybe you can see that this way is a little maybe easier. The, the black isn't always a great, uh, doesn't show, always show up well on the camera. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, let me try it this way. There, it's a big transparent panel. So what they do is they ultrasonically weld it all the way across. My only concern is that you could have some situations over time if those could get punctured and be sort of a leak. So the text is a little big in that space. So another recommendation to them might be to just reduce that uh, so that it's not either so transparent, so it's just not necessarily all through all the layers. Um, but that's from like a reliability standpoint. Now I did also test the AS, their ASTME level three surgical mask uh, in orange in this case. They have a lot of, again, a lot of colors. I was actually really impressed with this. This is a really nice mask mask. Um, so again, as with surgical masks, as worn, 76.65. This is why I don't really recommend surgical masks as like protective mask. You need something else, whether you do the double mask like we talked in the previous video, which I don't think is that great of an option, or a mask fitter. And I'll talk about more about those in the next video. A mask fitters kind of help hold this to your face. In terms of that, like this, boom, we jump up to, if we, if we, if we do it to our face, 92.41, pressure drop of 0.45. So, you know, from a surgical mask standpoint, they're actually making really nice surgical masks and might be considered if you're a mask fitter, or if you use like a mask fitting device like this, these are actually pretty nice. They come in colors too. So, um, definitely Definitely American made company doing it right. Test data published on their website so you can see all their um, filter test data. Um, they have some quality control specs in there as well. And they're making ASTME level threes. Um, so, you know, uh, I think they're, they're definitely doing it right. They can make some improvements to kind of keep driving it forward, but doing a good job. So another, another US-based uh, PPE manufacturer as well before I'd reach out to them to get some samples that they offer. Now they offer a wide variety of masks. They have sort of KN95s and they are rated KN95s uh, available in white and black. And they kind of have two versions. They have a, an adjustable ear loop version where they use some cord locks and they have some foam. And they also have a boat style mask, what they call boat style, which is really kind of like the KF style, but it's, it's made in China. So it's a KN95 boat style, I guess. Uh, maybe my terminology will have to change. Um, so the test data to come back on this is, you know, they're, they're using good media. Um, but I think in general, they're kind of a, they're kind of in a tough space. And I actually got the opportunity to talk to Shaz, who's the, the founder of well before and kind of chat with him about what they're doing. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So we'll jump in with their, um, KN95 style. So this is available in black, which I'm always sucker for black. Now they, they get adjustable ears by using cord locks. I think that's a really clever solution to, to take like a KN and upgrade it. And then they upgraded it to, upgraded it to with some foam. Uh, the foam is, it might be hard to see in the camera, but I'll try my best to get it to focus on there. So I'll use my little monitor over here. So you might be able to see there's like a soft foam inside of there. Uh, in the testing that I had with this mask, I had a little bit of problem. So I couldn't get a good face seal. So as worn like this mask, uh, I got 80 81.74. Even if I tried to tighten these ear loops as tight as I could, um, I just couldn't get a face seal and it's just, it leaks right past my nose. So one of the issues, and we talk about this a lot, is nose wire stiffness. So this one is certainly impacted by this. And I think I, I showed it in the video. So it's, it's stiff, but the spring back is a problem. So when you couple spring back plus foam, which is adding some compliance if issues there, it, what you end up with is a massive leak. So I kept getting leaks on here. I could only get about, uh, what was I getting? Uh, 81.74. So it was leaking heavily here. I just, the, the nose wire did not function correctly. If I sealed it up like this, I jumped up to 98.03. 98%. So the media is good, but that nose wire plus foam, foam, not a great combination. They also had fairly high pressure drop, um, came in at 0.8. So it's up there with that Lutema. So almost twice the pressure drop we normally see. So from this perspective, you know, it wasn't great. So I, I hacked the mask a little bit. So I took their, uh, 
here, here's the one I actually tested. I took off that foam in the inside, so I just removed that foam, uh, kept the ear, adjustable ear loose, but removed the foam. I did this on a separate day, so I also did the controls while all that data will be available in the Google Drive. Um, so I came back and removed it with the foam, and with the foam removed, I actually got uh, 91.66. So I go from, from 81.7 to 91, so basically a 10% improvement in leakage, or 10% better improvement in filtration efficiency, just by taking the foam out. Why? Because that foam was fighting that nose wire. It was hurting you know, a poorly conformable nose wire plus foam that didn't help. It all added together to get a poor seal. So once I removed that, I got 91.66. So I saw an improvement, but again, this gave me the best result. So again, the nose wire, you know, it just it's leaking around my face, and the, with the high pressure drop, that all adds together to just really drive leaks. So, uh, so I talked to Shaz. They, you know, they have a great quality system in place. So I, I always try to talk to suppliers and talk about their quality plan. Um, so they do, you know, media audits. They're doing piece audits, and then when they come in the U.S., they send them to a university for lab testing as well. So they have a good quality system. They're trying to make a good mass. So I talked about these issues, and they said, "Oh wow, you know, we kind of are hearing that ourselves." So they're actually off to the drawing board. They're going to have another mask ready to go. I think in late February or early March. Um, um, where they're going to address that. They actually have a uh, better nose wire. I saw some, he sent me some videos actually of him showing some experiments where they're looking at like that conformability aspect, showing, look, we're going to get better nose wires than anyone out there. They're adjusting the media. So they're going to make some changes to these. So I'm excited to see what they come out to offer. I think I just was on the website. They are sold out already. So maybe this video has no value because they're already out anyways. Um, so I'm excited to see what these new masks are going to be. And I also tested their boat style that came out of here. Uh, and I, I, the, I should say that it, from my perspective, I didn't test them, but they also offer a standard white and a standard black. I tested, I didn't test those, but they seem identical to those. I couldn't see any difference, so I don't think there are any difference. I think they just add, like, stick on the foam and add the adjustable cord lock. So, um, if you do want a per highly protective mask, but maybe not the most breathable, I think I would recommend just sticking with the standard option. Don't go to the nose foam and adjustable ear loops. I don't think it buys you much value. So this is their boat style. Uh, the boat style had the same thing. It has the. This is the. Boat style KN95. It has the same thing. It has a foam nose bridge inside of there to help to try to help seal it, but because of the weak nose wire, it really doesn't help. Um, again, high, good filtration efficiency if you can get it to seal. So as I as I wore it, uh, the the boat style mask as worn was uh, 67.27, and it leaks bad. And this is even worse because I think the nose wire on this is even like less stiff. Conformable, yes, but stiff, no. And so you're just fighting the foam. I, I can, it just leaks like a sip. I can't get it to seal in my face. And even though it has adjustable ear loops, I can get them as tight as I want. Now, if I just did this same experiment, but I did this again, 98.85. So really, you know, the media is high filtration efficiency media, but the nose wire and, and foam together just created a big leak sack. So actually I took, I removed the foam uh, from this mask and just tested it without the foam, just like this with no foam. Uh, and again, this port's I added because it's the best I was tested. I went up to 97%. So it highlights like you can't just add foam to make a mask seal better. You actually have to have foam and have a better nose seat wire as well. And so with the foam plus this nose wire, it couldn't get a good seal. So this mask, you know, if they offer it without the foam, that's what I would go for first. Um, otherwise, you know, I just don't think the uh, the mask in general is like really kind of kind of up there. Um, now I think actually I might have inserted a bottom nose wire in this as well as part of my mask hacking. Uh, I'll have to check my video results on that. So I might have a little start at the bottom. This also might have a bottom nose wire because I'm feeling the nose wire feels a little bit different here. Or I had extracted it and put in another one. No, I, I had removed it, it looks like. So I think there might even be a not bot. I might have hacked this one and put a bottom nose wire. So the media is good in terms of filtration efficiency. Oh, what, what's my, you know, another issue with this mask is really high pressure drop. I got 0.85. So the well before KN95 boat style, high, good, good media, good quality process, but they went too far. So they have way too high pressure, in my opinion, too high pressure, so almost twice. So next up is the Trivicity. Now the Trivicity is a US made mask. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna go uh, N95, NIOSH N95 standard. I'm not sh I, I forgot to check on that before I shot this, so I might put a star at the end. Um, they might be going for that, but these are a CE rated one. There's a European uh, PPE standard that's got put out, I believe as part of the COVID response. Um, so they certified to that. Um, US made, actually on the box, they have a little uh, near field scanning chip 
on this. And so you can like hold your phone against it. It pulls up the website. It must pull the data from here. I'm not sure exactly the technology behind it uh, in terms of what they're doing. Pulls up the data. It pulls up the website. It gives you the lot information, all that stuff. So really a great anti uh, counterfeit concept. I think other manufacturers should think about that. That's a really cool way to do it. Almost everyone has near field uh, chips on their phones nowadays. So that was really cool. Mask in general, bifold style, um, headband. Um, the issue that I had with it is, so the Trivicity, as I got it, I had a problem with the nose seal. So a common theme of this discussion is gonna be nose clip, nose wire, right? So good media, um, uh, but the issue is that the nose wire on this is, and you saw in my previous video, is one of the mo least conformable nose wires. And so I kept getting a leak right here. And again, I can feel it, so it highlights to me like fit factor of like 10 or something like that is achievable with just jets of air maybe. Uh, fit, otherwise, fit wise is pretty good. It's a little tight down here. It's kind of like that bifold style. They kind of tapered it. I think I always prefer, you know, I think from a discussion standpoint, the KN straight taper is better than these kind of angles in because it hooks your chin, which might be good for seal of a specific face size, but it narrows the range of face size that it can fit in. Uh, so I only got 92%, uh, sorry, excuse me, 92.62% uh, 0.6 pressure drop, uh, which is kind of a bit high on the higher end, but not terrible. Um, and a quality factor of 4.3 because it's leaking so bad. So the quality factor is as warm. Um, so I, I hacked it. And there's a couple other issues. See this also, this, uh, this little bump right here. And you notice maybe in the video that this is like sitting up against my eyes here too. So I decided to hack it a little bit. So if I took this mask and I pinched the nose wire, I got 98.21 with a point, roughly the same pressure up about 0.6. I didn't see a huge change in that measurement. That's because my measurement that isn't probably able to resolve that. So the media is good actually. These are actually good masks. The media is solid. The issue is all for me is that nose wire. So I decided to hack the mask. <laughs> so what I did is I took an X-Acto knife and I slit the top layers. Then the media, it's a, uh, for them, it's this outer spun bond, then the nose wire, and then the filtration media is below that. So I took an X-Acto knife and I trimmed this and I slid out their nose wire and I slid in my personal favorite, the LG Air Washer nose wire. And with that configuration, uh, with just the nose wire in there, I got 98.73, so a really good seal. Uh, and it, it instantly solved the issues that I had. Again, this is the test port I had. So uh, I took it one step further. I still had that extra material that's poking me in the eyes for my face. So I trimmed it with my scissors, or sorry, 97.9 with the nose wire. I trim it, I get 98.73. So I further improved it because it was, it was holding it open a little bit here uh, because it was like basically sitting up onto my eyeballs. So a couple small tweaks to the mask, significant improvement. So good media. Uh, you know, headband style, KN style with maybe a little hook, so it's maybe a little more face specific, but the nose wire killed it on this. Again, for me, I have a face that you need a good nose wire, and I think other people are going to too. So, you know, if you try to recommend masks for a wide variety of faces and it doesn't fit my face, then odds are it's not going to fit other people with similar faces. So maybe my video ends up all being people that look like me <laughs> fit faces, but I'll try my best to try others. But I had tried it with other people like my wife, and she said the same thing that she couldn't get it to seal here. She could feel it leaking past her nose. So it highlights nose wire, nose wire, nose wire needs to be conformable stiff if it's stiff but not conformable it really doesn't do much for you so good good company I, I reached out to them and gave the data i haven't heard back if they're going to try to improve it or not um, i hope they do i think they got a good quality product reasonably priced too um, it just didn't meet that spec on the nose wire Another black mask we tested is, or I tested is the Powcom KN95, uh, identical to the white. I couldn't see any difference. Maybe the ear loops are slightly different. Maybe they're like a little bit thinner maybe, but it's hard to say if that is actually a difference of just over lots that these are changing, right? Because I'm sure the availability of this material changes over time and the manufacturer changes. Uh, black KN95, identical to the white, good face fit. Nose wire is, you know, decent. It's not my favorite nose wire, but it fits my face good enough. So I usually say, okay, that's good. Uh, protective. Um, for the Palcom, I got 96.81. Uh, if, I, if I do this, I get 98.86, which means there is some leaking that happens, but you know, 96 is still pretty dang good as is. So, uh, you know, fits mine, the pressure drop is really good on this mask. I got, uh, you know, 0.45. So, you know, we're in the good pressure drop range. So good breathability, good protection, good nose wire. That's why I kind of recommend this. So if you're looking for KN95s that are black, I like them. Uh, Bonafide Mass, again, we do the supplier qualification. They are a direct importer for Powcom. I think they're official US, they are, well, they are, they claim, well, they don't claim, they have listed that they are the official Powcom distributor in the United States. You know that you're coming straight from Powcom. You want to avoid like third parties that are buying because, uh, you know, you always wonder like, how do they know that they're getting good masks and they're not, you know, if they buy from random suppliers. So these are coming straight from Powcom. Good mask. I like them. Reasonably priced. I think they're down to a dollar a mask in some moderate volume, like maybe 50 masks or something like that. So getting pretty dang cheap.
which is good. More people should wear them. All right, so I tested another. So this is the Mass Labs, uh, I think it's pronounced Malia Design Group. So these are, now there's a little bit of back and forth, I, and we'll have an interview with Mass Lab uh, founder Albert. Um, these are their version two. I think they were labeled FFP1 because at the time they uh, had already cut over this design, used the new media, but were waiting for that FFP2 approval. Uh, they were ASTME level three already certified, but they, they wanted that thing. So these are technically the box at FFP1, but certain versions of this are. Now they do have an entire FFP2 line now, so I'm gonna recommend, you know, unless you want these specific designs, uh, buy the FFP2 if you want FFP2, but these are uh, FFP2 rated. Now these are a great mask if you're looking for fashion. I mean, the print quality is amazing. I didn't get any mass collapse on these. Um, the ear loops are not adjustable, so there is that. But like in terms of breathability, they're really breathable, really good filtration efficiency. You know, so maybe the ear loop, and they don't offer different sizes right now. They're only offering a single size. I got 98.52 on this one with a 0.25 pressure up. So it's actually uh, just behind. I think other than that bluegrass mask, which only added at, at my test aerosol, my face 85%. This is like the same pressure drop at 98. So these are really amazing masks. I'm really excited. My only complaints on them are the nose wires maybe a little shorter than I would like. It doesn't quite go far enough on my face, and it's not quite as conformable and stiff as like a Botten or an LG, and so it doesn't quite. It's not. It's almost there. Now I did talk to Albert. In fact, they have on the way to me their next batch of masks that they have made some changes to the nose wire to further improve that. So I'm going to test those out here shortly, along with these ombre, ombre uh, FFP2 that were sent to me. So I'll have that test data ho hopefully soon. But what a fashionable mask. I, I wear this one myself. I actually hack this mask too. Uh, one of these, I slid in a bottom nose wire uh, when I wear it. I did the same kind of mask hack. I took an exact and I cut it, slid out there, slid in a bottom. I wore that and it is just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a mask that I could wear all day. My only complaint about them is that the three layer, I'm, I'm, I want to check about some durability what I find is when the, I don't get mass collapse when they're like this, but if they get humid, it's winter outside right now. I'm noticing when they get humid and the pressure drop goes up a little bit, they're not as stiff on the outside. So I do start to get a little mass collapse in cold environments. So in indoor conditions, I don't get any, but outdoor. So, you know, maybe from like a durability relative, the air washer, like LG or Botten, maybe they're just maybe a little bit lower. Um, but I think we'll, we'll see what the new ones, but in general, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a mass nerd. I'm really going pretty critiqued. I still recommend, they still make my recommendation chart or list. So those are really cool. And uh, we'll have an interview with Albert, hopefully in the next video, I'll try to splice it together. I'll have some people who are helping me edit, uh, do that. And they'll, they'll of course get the credit for that, um, uh, for the next video. Uh, Dr. Puri Medium, I tested this, this just came in. The Dr. Puri Medium is a much smaller mask. And what I've kind of learned now that I finally got my hands on some smaller masks is that smaller masks actually fit bigger faces too. I actually will talk about a kid's mask I tested as part of this, uh, only because I figured out how to extend the, uh, well, that one had a large ear loops. The other ones that don't is necessary, don't have as long of ear loops. So I'm gonna work on figuring out some hack to do that. Um, so this is a Dr. Puri Medium, quite small. You can see it's like barely, it's just barely making it under my chin and it's not all the way up my nose. It's kind of hanging down. So what I find is that these, that this distance here is an important metric. So I gotta think about how I'm gonna measure that for the future. I don't know yet, um, but you know, so the Dr. Puri is definitely smaller, but it still fits my face, good nose wire, and I still got good filtration efficiency. So for the Dr. Puri Medium, I got 98.72, 0.43 inch pressure drop. So good, good media in it again. Uh, so, you know, it highlights to me that that you probably want to err on the smaller side and this metric might be a very dominant metric. So I got to think about how I measure this in mass. You know, maybe maybe what I can do is like do this kind of measurement where I measure, where I fold it in half and then measure from here to here. I might start doing that. Uh, Cause right now I was doing just length and height, but maybe I should do this measurement and that might be a, an, another important one. So I got to think about how to do that and whether that's important, but I think, uh, you know, a smaller mask actually does fit too. It's just not as comfortable. Definitely could not wear that for very long. It was very uncomfortable to wear even during the length of this video, but still a protective mask. It does have mask collapse, so eh, it's kind of annoying, but it's one of the few medium masks that you can get right now. I'll also be testing the bot medium. We'll see how it stacks up to that. All right, next up, we'll do another small mask, but this is extra small. So this is a kid's mask. A lot of people have been asking to test kid's mask. Most of them, I found that I had a problem with um, the blue kid's mask, that the ear loops are too, actually too, way too short even for me. The nice thing with the blue 
kids mask here that I have is that the Bluna kids mask is just like the Bluna a large mask that I have, uh, adjustable ear loops, but because the adjustable ear loops are actually big enough to fit, and I was shocked that this fit my face. So the Bluna kids mask I did test 98.79. I didn't do any pressure drop measurements and stuff like that because I don't think that's even a fair metric. The mask is tiny and it barely fits, uh, and I did, actually just didn't have time either, um, but I wanted to publish the filtration data, 98.75. Just breathe-wise, it feels pretty good. It's got to it's it feels identical to the Bluna. So even this kid's mask is actually pretty breathable. Now, again, it highlights like, can you wear a kid's mask? You know, it fit 98.79, just as I'm showing it now. The issue is that it barely sits under my chin. So as soon as I go my mouth, ah, my chin comes out. It's too small. So it highlights this distance is probably important. And notice it's like way down on the end of my nose here. It's like barely catching my nose. So good media, adjustable ear loops. If you have a kid and you're looking for a really small mask, this might be a good option. They are good quality so i was actually impressed so identical to i mean i, I kind of compared the adult versus the kid like media seems exactly the same everything about this mask seems exactly the same as the bluna adult mask so if you're looking for something for a younger kid that's going to be it i would like to i wish the blunas came in a medium too because man that would just or like or a little bit larger say size because i think i think the bluna might be one of my favorite masks out there uh in terms of like breathability of the media and just fit they did they did a really just nailed it okay uh Always to provide some context, and I was since I had to test the name, as well talk about it. This is a cloth mask coming out of manufacturer or uh, an individual out of the UK is trying to expand the use of masks in countries that may not be able to afford KF94s that we're testing here. So he had built a six layer satin mask. Uh, it's actually not that bad in terms of breathability protection. You know, not a, not great. So for my test, I got fifty, you know, about fifty five percent, fifty four point one three percent pressure drop about 0.33 so it's actually really breathable in fact it's more breathable uh than uh than oh, 0.4 sorry 0.4 inches of water it, it's probably more breathable than you know some of those reliable medical but of course it does not give the same level of protection so it has like a, a single strap heavy gauge nose wire super heavy nose wire uh and i got about 55 which actually is pretty dang good i know that most people think like that's nothing but just to have just satin at this breathability is really good and when you extrapolate that data maybe up to like the 0.5 micron kind of the lowest that we'd expect for covid aerosols you're probably getting in the 70s or 80s percent protection which is really good for a cloth mask and so for countries that won't be able to have access to some of this which is terrible because we should do that as a global thing we should solve this for all people that live in the world not just any particular nation but it is what it is uh um, so really cool. I wanted to test it. Thank you for sending that to me. I believe his name's Paul. So thank you very much for sending that. Really cool. Um, and that's awesome work that you're doing. So I, this one's washed and ready for another test because I want to see what happens post-wash if it actually further improves. I've heard some, I've read some journal articles. Now I did get some masks in from Everyday Beauty Lab. I did not test them in this video. I actually took their packages and compared them to the be healthy packages because they're looking to qualify more suppliers for masks because they carry buttons and stuff like that too. They definitely are importing straight from our South Korea. The masks are identical, even lot number information. Um, so highly, highly confident. They had actually sent me also some other materials. They had sent me this Japanese uh, uh, surgical mask. It's the FG300CI. Now this has like some uh, activated carbon or something inside of it. Really cool mask, really, really breathable. Again, but it highlights surgical masks by themselves, not as good. So this one as worn, 41.15 so remember that lutima is getting 76 this one's 41 what's the issue right here doesn't this i couldn't get a good nose seal and i can't get a seal here now if i do the kind of fix the mask cold jumps up to 88.68 which is actually pretty good and 0.3 pressure drop so like that's actually really good uh, for a surgical mask. So really a nice high-end mask. So if you're a mask fitter, I'm going to start testing some more surgical masks because I know people are interested in using mask fitters. So I'm going to help and see if I can find better surgical masks too. So we want, you know, surgical masks have the same problems. We want good quality media, low pressure drop. This Japanese one is really, really nice. Uh, I'm not sure if the carbon really helps you much in terms of odors. I, I haven't tested that yet, but... Uh, but the media on this is actually really good. Now, I also tested another surgical mask. This is a company out of Canada, the Acoustic Rev Revolution Acoustics. So they're using like an EPTFE media inside of this. Um, their claim was that it was more audible, so you're not going to dampen the noise as much. You know, of course, with surgical masks, everyone makes claims that they're highly protective, uh, which is not always the case because surgical masks don't seal well. As is... 84.64 pressure drop. So I actually had a pretty good face seal. They did a good job. And now it fits my face. Now, other people's faces, this may not fit as well. My complaint with it, though, is that uh, if I seal it up, I get 89, but it has a really high pressure drop, 0.7 inches of water. So while the material may be very good for vocal communication, uh, it also has a ton of mass claps. I mean, you can just see right here. Even though there's a test port that's probed on this, watch this. I'm just breathing through the test port. 
it's so it just it's really not the pressure drop isn't that good across this media so they had sent it over i'll send this to video for them to review they can take a look at it but uh, so if you're a, a mass fitter type person you know i probably wouldn't recommend this mask just because the pressure drops so high i mean it's a cool concept i hope they can work on that media a little bit more and get the pressure drop down but electrostatic really just kind of dominates Okay, so that's all that I have today. I'll be uh, hopefully editing and getting it shot out. I have a whole bunch of masks coming up. We're gonna be testing Honeywell H9010s, the 3M9501, 9502, their NIOSH approved uh, version. I can't remember that number off the top of my head. Um, we'll be I'll be testing the Botten Kids masks, Ooh, <laughs> like this. I got them all sitting here ready to go. Botten Kids masks, Botten Medium. I got a whole bunch more masks I'm excited to test. Uh, so hang around, hopefully we'll have the next video. I'm gonna try my best to get that out a little faster. I apologize a month from my last video. Uh, I took a couple weeks off just to take a break for Christmas there uh, for mask testing. And I also uh, am trying my best to answer all those YouTube comments, which is taking more and more time. So I'm gonna do my best to do it. If you leave a YouTube comment and I don't answer, or if you've like replied to a, a one that I reply to, the YouTube comment system management is really difficult for me. Uh, I get the notification, but I can never find the comments. So if you don't hear an answer from me, just post it again and I'll, I'll try my best to answer it. Um, so thanks Mass Nerds for hanging around. We'll catch you on the next video. And uh, as usual, you can like and subscribe. But uh, if you see bike videos, uh, it means the pandemic's over. So thanks everybody for watching.